Hello and welcome to Mobility Outlook. A simulation industry expert, Walt Hahn leads Ensys' global sales and customer excellence teams as its vice president. Walt started with Ensys in 2007 as an account manager and quickly grew his responsibilities in sales management. From 2019 to 2022, he led Ensys' largest and fastest growing region, the Americas. Walt has led all of the company's go-to-market segments from channel partners to territory accounts to Ensys' largest enterprise customers. He has personally overseen some of the largest contracts in the company's history and has led the modernization of Ensys' vertical strategy. Walt, welcome to Mobility Outlook. Well, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Now, despite various initiatives taken by governments and industry worldwide, the road to decarbonization isn't going to be easy, right? So what are some of those challenges that you see and what's the role that ANSYS could play in ensuring decarbonization or carbon neutrality? Yeah, you know, at ANSYS, we think that um, decarbonization and a more sustainable future is really critical um, you know, to the overall, our overall environment and the overall world. And so when we look at it, we think it's critically important that we focus on you know, our customers in the world helping um, you know, tackle these challenges. Right. But some of the challenges that we see is you know, we're, we're, we're seeing a big transformational shift to make this happen across many industries, whether it's electrification in the automotive industry to drive it, whether it's looking at um, new products to, to capture carbon um, in the environment. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of new product development that has to go into, into the world to, mm. to make this decarbonization happen. And that transformation um, you know, takes changing the way that we think about product development today and looking at it in a new way. Okay, all right. Uh, give us an understanding of your approach to ESG and the related ro roadmap. Yeah, so, so look, to, to, to capture decarbonization and to focus on ESG, you know, what we're doing at ANSYS is we're focusing on it in two ways. One, mm -hmm. we're focusing on it in developing next generation simulation technologies right. that our customers can use to tackle their ESG challenges. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, you know, when somebody's developing a product, historically they build a physical prototype and they test it. Mm -hmm. But by leveraging more simulation, they can build it in a digital environment. And by building this in this digital environment, it can help them reduce the amount of material waste, the amount of, of cost, which is really good for the environment. But also enables them, the most important thing, to develop a more efficient product. Right? And that more efficient product has a, a reduction in carbon footprint because maybe it's lighter and gets better gas mileage. Um, maybe the, the materials that they use are, are more recyclable. And so at ANSYS, we're focused on developing that technology for our customers can, so our customers can use it and develop a more energy efficient products. Um, but, also, but also it's important that we help our customers understand how to use these next generation technologies. And so we're really focused on training and, and supporting our customers in that way. Okay, help me understand this better, uh, Paul. Yeah. Uh, one of your strategic directions within the ESG framework is to collaborate with your stakeholders. Yeah. Right? Uh, so how are you really enabling that ecosystem of collaboration with your partners, with your stakeholders, as well as customers? Yeah, so, so the ecosystem is, is critically important to, to make it happen. And so, and so how we're doing that is, is when you look at the ecosystem and where ANSYS plays, um, we're really we're really focused in all, we really play in all industries. So we play in the automotive industry, the right. aerospace and defense industry, the energy industry, and so we're really focused at developing developing technologies that impact um, all of those industries, right? And by developing that, it will create will create an ecosystem. Um, it, it will create an ecosystem. So so for example, if you take the automotive industry. We're working with customers to we're working with customers to develop um, next generation batteries that will make automobiles more efficient. 
that same platform and that, those same battery technologies that we're helping them develop are also being used in the EV toll market so that, sure. you know, so that aircraft can be, be more energy efficient as well. And so some of the technologies are now starting to cross, cross collaborate against across different, uh, different um, industries. All right. Since we're talking about the mobility uh, ecosystem, various yeah. verticals, automotive to EV tolls to aerospace and defense, yeah. what's the role that simulation will play in the future? Yeah. Uh, considering the the rapid growth that we see uh, happening in the in the industry today. Yeah. No. So so that's that's a great question. So at the core of it, when you when you're developing a product, first thing you have to look at is what materials are you building that product with? Yep. And so in simulation, we're working with our customers, one, to use the most sustainable material in the design of their product. And so when you're designing a product, if you can run simulations and test how different materials perform inside the product, and then the engineers can then look at that simulation and say, okay, well, maybe this aluminum I bought from a certain part of the world isn't as sustainable as a, a different aluminum. Sure. And so they can test all of those variations digitally. Our engineers can now start developing the most efficient, the most sustainable product. Mm -hmm. And so simulation is at the core of developing sustainable products because it enables you to test all of these variations in a digital environment and end up with the most sustainable and the most, um, the most energy efficient product that they can build. Right, right. The other aspect that is increasingly getting important is yeah. circular economy, right? Is, we is, talk, I'm sorry. Circular economy. Yeah, now we're yeah. talking about you know, recycling, remanufacturing, sure. and the role of simulation therein, yeah. uh, Walt. How does it really help, and how much can it really sort of enable? the industry to become more efficient. Yeah, so, so what I talked about a few minutes ago was, was material, and so what we're doing is we're enabling our customers to look at the recyclability of, of the material that right. they're using inside the product, as well as the CO2 footprint of that mm -hmm. material. And so when they're building that product, they're, they're, choosing, they're choosing the most recyclable material, they're choosing the material that has the least CO2 footprint. And by running simulations against it, then they can decide if that material performs in that product. Right. The next way is that, look, as, as you're looking at this transformation across the automotive industry and the, the aerospace and defense industry, this is a major transformation that they're going through. And for them to develop the most energy efficient product, they can't build 10, 100 physical prototypes to test all of these new variations. So to test, you know, what's, what's the best, um, what's the best uh, material, what's the best um, fuel to use for this platform, you can't, you can't build those physical mm -hmm. prototypes. But in simulation, you can test millions and tens of millions of different variations so that you can get to this new, new platform. And so these, these big industry transformations that we're seeing mm -hmm. in electrification, in hydrogen, those actually wouldn't be possible if you couldn't, mm -hmm. if you couldn't run it virtually and test all of the, the if you couldn't test all the variations digitally in simulation. All right, all right. interesting. Well, to your mind, what are those critical areas that uh, you as an organization need to focus on yeah. you know when we're talking of carbon neutrality goals yeah. of the future and and what would your guidance be to your customers as well yeah so, so first thing we have to do is when in this area is that we have to start we have to start with education mm -hmm. and so to, to do an education in a transformational shift you have to go into the universities mm -hmm. and so what we're doing at ANSYS is we're going into all of the major universities around the world even especially here in India, mm. and training engineers on how to leverage simulation technologies right. and training those engineers on the impact that new digital technologies and new platforms can have on the overall, the overall ecosystem. And so if you, if you start with the universities and you train the next generation of engineers, as they move up into the companies, they drive that transformational mm. shift. And so that's, that's really at the core of where we're starting, but we're also starting inside, inside our customer bases by aligning with executives, by aligning with executives on their ESG goals and showing them how simulation and material selection can help them meet their ESG goals is also an area that we're focused on. How, what are you doing as an organization to sort of uh, increase the level of skilling within the organization when, when you're talking about sustainability? So, so inside, inside ANSYS, look, it's a, it's a top level, it's a top level initiative from the board of directors down to the executive team that sustainability is gonna be one of our main focuses. And so by doing that, 
we're driving it into the products and making the products more user friendly with with an eye on sustainability um, and then we're pushing it out inside of our inside of our customer base as well okay uh, coming to India wall you know yeah. what what is your overall impression of the Indian industry in the current state and what is the kind of opportunities that you see for instance here yeah the the India the India market is is uh, is it has great potential and great opportunity. And so, from Ansys, look, we we have offices all over India in mm -hmm. Bangalore and Pune, right. um, in in New Delhi, and so we we see a tremendous opportunity because the 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 talent of engineers and um, the opportunity of industry here is is, um, is fantastic. And it's across all sectors, right? You, when you think about the, the number of semiconductor chips that are designed in India, mm -hmm. it's very large. When you think about the automotive industry, it's one of the largest automotive industries in the world, aerospace and defense. And so across all industries, you see them here in India, as well as across all of the major areas from mechanical engineering to fluids to optical. And so we, we are continuing a heavy investment in India, um, as well as supporting our, our uh, many customers around the world that are, are here in India. All right. And how do you see this really growing in the coming years? What's the kind of contribution you see India making to Ensys Global? Yeah. So, so India is um, when you think about when you think about some of our largest our largest customers in the world, they have major centers here in India, mm. and that's driving a major portion of of. Um, is driving a major portion of the use of simulation. And so when you think about when you think about sustainability and you think about the future, the engineering talent that's here in India is going to help drive that transformational shift around the world. Um, and so we're really focused on working with the in India engineers and the universities as well as in the companies to, to help drive that transformational shift. From a sustainability point of view, again, you know, when you look at the Indian industry, uh, there, there's been a lot of focus around green hydrogen, mm -hmm. uh, electrification of the, of the sector. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see this going forward? And what are those certain verticals that you think will drive sustainability in the coming years? Yeah, so, so I think sustainability is going to have to be driven across all of the major industries, right? When you think about, when you think about the semiconductor industry, you're going to have to drive sustainability in there because the amount of power that's being used inside the massive data centers. And so the semiconductor industry in India is looking at new ways to make semiconductors and the chips more energy efficient, mm -hmm. which will, will drive down consumption. Mm -hmm. When you look at the automotive market, you're seeing the transformation to electrification as well as hydrogen. And so we're seeing that inside India. Um, as well as the aerospace and defense with different EV tall and different technologies. And so sustainability is not going to be one, one industry. One industry can't tackle it. It has to be all industries. It has to be all products. And you have to look at it from the, from the very beginning of the design of the product all the way through its recyclability and end of life. And so I think it's going to take um, an industry. It's going to take all industries to help tackle this challenge for the world. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question about, you know, more about our, your role, right? Yeah. Uh, when you say customer excellence, uh, Walt, yeah. uh, how would you define that? Yeah. What is the focus that you bring in? Yeah, so, so customer excellence for us is our global field engineers. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we have engineers around the world that support our customers in using our technology and also support our customers in developing their technologies. And so our, our customer excellence is, is the majority of them are PhD engineers. And so we have over 2,000 engineers in this sure. organization that are sitting with our customers every day, helping them um, leverage simulation technologies and supporting them in the development of their products. Very interesting. One final question, Walt. Yeah. Uh, you've talked about, uh, on a couple of occasions, about the quality of engineering talent that India produces every yeah. year, yeah. right? How does ENSYS really sort of plan to leverage that? And you know, how, how do you see that growth yeah. coming in from, from India? Yeah, and so, and so we see the talent of engineers coming out of India is, is, is fantastic. It, it keeps growing and it's across, it's across all of the different disciplines. So at ANSYS, we focus, we, we focus on all the different disciplines. So electromagnetics is a big focus and a big growth here in India. And we have a massive team that, that leverages that talent. Fluid dynamics engineers, material science engineers, mechanical engineers, all of that talent is being developed in the, in, into the uh, engineering institutes in India. And so what do we do at ANSYS? We plan to continue to um, expand the number of, we call them customer excellent engineers sure. here in India, as well as we have development centers across all of engineers, all of India that's helping develop our next generation te technology. Okay. 
Well, thank you so much for uh, taking time to speak to us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I appreciate the time. Thank you for having me here and look forward to talking to you again in the future. Look forward to it. All right. Thank, thank you. you.